got a center insulator here. And at this point, twin lead comes down. Mine's 300 ohm, some people use 450 ohm. And uh, this is 31 feet. Then it, uh, on mine, it, the one we have for the club didn't have this, so I made an ugly ballon. You know, it just made a coil of coax. But the one at home has a piece of, uh, I think three quarter inch PVC and it has a lot of little uh, ferrite beads in it. And then there's a coax connector here at 239 and it goes into coax. Okay, so what happens is on certain frequencies, the wavelength fits into these, okay, up there, depending on the frequency. On longer frequency, lower frequencies where you need a longer <coughs> antenna, it actually goes down into here and uses this part called the matching section as part of the active antenna itself. So this isn't actually down lead till you get to here. This is actually part of the frequency matching. Well, what, what band wants a 51 foot? It was originally designed for 20 meters by Varney in England to fit on a small English lot, you know, the, the little lot, city lots or something. And then uh, they later found out that it works on other frequencies too. It'll work on all the bands pretty much. You just need a tuner. You, yeah, you need a tuner because on a lot of bands it's 10 to 1. 20 meters, it's pretty smooth. Now mine at home is an inverted V with about 30 feet height there and about 12 feet on the ends. Okay, so because of that, uh, the pattern on a lot of bands is like petals of a flower. Different bands, it's different petals and stuff like that. Where, so mine's real sensitive in that direction, that direction, that direction, and that way, and so on. Okay, but it got little null spots too. Okay, and uh, I'm happy with it. I use it with an auto tuner. And it works great on all bands. Uh, don't have any real problem with it. Works okay on 80? Uh, 80, not so much. Mm -hmm. Not so much. Uh, but I can get parts of it, a lot, most of 80. Uh, the auto tuner stretches a little on that band. Sure. And I've seen uh, versions that have 66 feet on each side that work yeah. better on 80. Well, that makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the yeah they call it the max or something. Yeah. Yeah. But a little bit longer helps with it. Yeah. Supposedly, if you tie both and these leads together down. to make one long one and then run it against a counterpoise, you can get 160. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You make a loop out of it. Yeah. You make a loop out of the antenna. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing is a loop line. So basically that's a G5RB. And it, it's a nice all band antenna. It's easy to make or to buy. It's cheap. You don't have to spend gobs of money on, uh, you know, rotors and this and that and the other. And uh, it works for me. I, I, I've been using it for what, about eight years now. And They're very popular. Yeah. So, but mine isn't. So mine goes like this, but then it comes down and it's, oh, mine's up uh, somewhere around 30 feet, but mine just loops through some bushes like that where <laughs> I cut the bushes away and it's behind the bushes. <laughs> so it's not touching any branches near it. And then I threw a piece of uh, PVC in the ground, three quarter inch PVC, like, like a big standoff and uh, did a zip tie to a, a hole I drilled in there to keep it off the ground. And then it go, and then the uh, ferrite bead choke thing is here and then it goes to coax. So I mean, mine's not set up exactly perfect and it works fine. PDX with it? Oh yeah, yeah. And then I also have the, uh, a fan dipole where I have like 40 meters that way, and I think I got 20 meters going like that. And there, these two are hooked together, these two are hooked together, and then there's a big ugly bow in there, and then it goes in the drive. And this one works well too, but uh, not as well as the G5RV. When you make a fan dipole, do the, do the uh, elements for each fan have to be some relationship to each other? Or could I, could I add some, a 17 and 12 meter to my you can do whatever you want with these, but at the same point. they will interact with each other. 
So you're going to spend a good part of an afternoon with an antenna analyzer adding a little here, taking a off a little there, soldering a little on here because you took off too much. We've all done that, you know. And uh, so now when I build antennas, what I do is if this is the end insulator on the antenna, I usually let it hang down a little like that at the end. So I'll tie it and then leave a tail on it so I can trim it easy or solder on as the case may be. Or you, can, or you can loop it back and wrap it. Or, yeah, or you can loop it and wrap it too, exactly. Yeah, so. that's what I did with my new 